making a way. Thank you for making a way. Heavenly Father, God, we thank you for this day. We thank you, God, for allowing us to be able to be in your house one more time. God, we thank you for waking us up this morning, God, starting us on our way. God, we thank you, God, for all the activities of our limbs, God. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy, God, for your love and for your kindness, God. We thank you that you allowed us to be able to make it here safely, God. And we thank you, God, that you're going to bless us to make it back. God, we give you all the praise and the glory, God, just for who you are, God. Right now, God, we just want to think on the goodness of you, God. We want to think on the name Jesus, God, and how it has brought us all the way here, God, and how it will continue to bring us forward, God. We thank you, God. We thank you, God. We, as we approach Easter, God, we want to just already praise you, God, for the fact that you done, uh, that you came, God, that you sent your son, God. He lived, God. He healed, God. He, 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 he ministered, God. And then when it came time for him to die, God, he didn't stay dead, but he proved that he was God. And he got up, God, and he rose with all power in his hand, God. So we thank you for being God, the true and living God, still living, God, the living word, God, and that your word is not dead. We profess, God, that it is still living today, God, active in our lives, God, improving and changing and redeeming, God, and saving over and over again, God. So we thank you for that, God and give you the praise and the glory. The scripture uh, today is gonna be coming from, uh, uh, it's gonna be coming from Acts 4 and 12. It says, neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other the name, there is, no, there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. There's also Philippians 2 and 10 that says that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and, under, and, and on earth and under the earth. So the Lord, may the Lord of the word be, uh, may the word of the Lord be blessed and everyone that heard it.
sorrow. Joy is sorrow. Hey, you're everything to me. You're everything to me. Hope for tomorrow. Hope for tomorrow. You're everything to me. You're everything to me. Everything to me. You're everything to me. You're everything to 
grace, mercy, and peace. If he's everything to you, do me a favor, lift your hands and just tell him he's everything. Come on, you're in the house of the Lord this morning. And we've come into this house and gathered in his name just to worship him. I need somebody who knows that he's everything. Just lift your hands real quick and just tell him he's everything to me. Come on, open your mouth and just begin to declare Hallelujah. that he's everything to you. Invite him in this morning. Come on. Hallelujah. Father, we're welcoming your move this morning. We trust you. We believe you for a move of God this morning. That's it, believers, all over this room. Just begin to open your mouth. Hallelujah. We worship you. Come on. If you're in here, you might as well worship those of you online. Come on, open your mouth and begin to worship him. We declare your worthiness. We declare that you are everything to us. In the mighty name of Jesus. Come on. Just take a few minutes and use your lips. Use your tongue to create an atmosphere. Every time you say hallelujah. Every time you tell him thank you. Every time you magnify him. Come on, come on, come on, come on. That's it. Open your mouth and tell them thank you. Father, we give you glory. We honor you. We magnify you. There is none like you. No one else can touch my heart like you do. Come on. I can search for all eternity and still find there is none come on you gotta flip this room with your mouth with your worship invite them in hallelujah God magnify you Lord we glorify you something supernatural is going to happen in this room I need the expectation of the people of God to rise even now. I'm expecting God to do something great. I'm expecting God to work a miracle. I'm expecting him. I'm expecting him. Where is your expectation? We bless you. We honor you do me a favor because some of you are still trying to get warmed up I need you to get out of your seat and I want you to go find somebody on the other side come on come on get out of your seat I got a message for them just move around the sanctuary I don't care if you're on this wall and on that wall if your legs work go find somebody and greet them on the other side tell them welcome and when you get to that person, come on, you didn't even give them the message yet. Y'all running, why y'all scared? Get back over there and find somebody. I haven't given you what to say yet. Come on, get that to the person and just tell them, say, neighbor, I'm expecting a supernatural move of God. That's it, move around. Tell somebody, I'm expecting something miraculous to happen in this place. Come on. That's it. Give them a message. Not idle words. Not time to have a conversation. Just tell somebody, I'm expecting a miracle. I'm expecting. That's the only reason I'm here this morning. I came expecting a miracle. I came expecting God to do something supernatural. Where is your expectation? Where is your faith? I'm looking for a miracle. I expect the impossible. I see the invisible. Y'all don't want to. your finger at somebody next to you and tell them before you leave here 
something is going to be changed about you. Come on, tell them before you leave here. God's going to work something miraculous in your life. And if you really believe it, put your preacher voice on and tell them before you leave. Y'all don't want to have church. Tell them, amen. Before you leave, God's going to work it out. Hallelujah. something you need God to work out for you this morning I said how many of you got stuff you need God look at somebody and tell them he's gonna work work it out for you I came to have church I don't know what look at somebody and tell them I got some stuff I need God to work out for me Tell him I got some stuff. Now encourage him. Look at him and tell him he's gonna work. Work it out. Work it out. Me. I feel him working. I feel him working. I feel it's working in your favor. I'm supposed to be greeting the audience, but I feel God working some stuff in your favor. Yes, God. Yes, God. I said, I feel him working it in your favor. Look at somebody that looked like they need God to work something out for them. Point at him and just tell him he's going to work. Work it out. of you watching online. It's working out. It's working out. I need you to encourage yourself. Those of you all the way in the back, those of you in the middle, those of you in the front, it only works if we end it together. Just touch yourself and tell yourself sooner or later. Come on. It's going to turn in my favor. He's working it out. I just need somebody who believes it. Lay hands on yourself and just say sooner or later. It'll turn. I don't know who I'm talking to, but it's got to turn. It's got to turn. It's got to turn. It's, got to turn. it's been stuck long enough. It's, I feel it. I feel it. Those of you watching us live this morning, we want to welcome you to this fresh fire experience. The presence of the Lord is here. He's in the sanctuary. And we want you to know that we are thankful that you decided to tune in to us. Let's help welcome our online audience. I see Samilia, we're praying for a speedy recovery. I see Sion Jr. in college, North Manchester. I see Jennifer. I see Ashley. Thank you so much, Shimona. Those of you who are watching us online, we welcome you. Everybody who is watching, I see Rashanta. God bless you all the way in Arizona. We thank God for you. Those of you who are watching, Mother Lois. He's working it out. He's working it out. He's working it out. Listen, I need you, Tanya, I need all of you to share this broadcast right now. Share it now, please, and check in. Those of you that are online, check in with us now. Check in with us now. Those of you that are online, check in and let somebody know that you are 
at New Hope, even if you're here just virtually, let us know that. Those of you that are in the sanctuary, get your phones out and check in with us. Check in with us. Let us know. We welcome you, welcome you, welcome you. God bless you. And we thank you for worshiping with us. All right? Listen, we're going to ask at this time if we will prepare our hearts for the communion. Uh, we need all of you all to come. Uh, we're waiting on our baptism candidate to get ready. Is she here? All right, come on. We stopped the whole service. Bring her around here. We're getting ready to baptize her. Hallelujah. Choir members, y'all just remain in your place. Amen. Do me a favor. Let's spread the waters like that. And we're going, we got a soul to baptize. So sometimes you have structure and you have order. And sometimes that structure and order doesn't go as planned. But it's important enough for you to restructure and reorder for the sake of what God wants to do. Amen? And it was important enough to her for them to call and say, we're running late. We're on our way. Come on. And initially, you got to know that when somebody is really trying to get to what God has for them, you got to sometimes change the service for them. So we're going to pray for the water. Father, bless this water according to Acts chapter 2. You made us a promise that if any one of us would be baptized in Jesus' name, in the name of the Lord Jesus, that not only would you bless our obedience, but you said we shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. And so, Father, I pray according to your promise and according to your word that this water would be holy water. The hydrogen and the oxygen would not just be matter, but it would be holy and acceptable to you. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. I need somebody to give God praise and thank God for what he's doing. Come on, that's it. She praising him, we praising him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Don't be nervous. God got you. What a mighty God we serve. The Lord is blessing her. She came here this morning from a place where she's getting help. But it was serious enough. So these are the people I want in church. There's too many people out here that need Jesus for us to be out here member swapping. We don't have to swap members. Let's go get the ones. Come on. Come here, Elder Horns. Come on, Elder Horns. Come up here. How? Show to my nose. I feel God. I just want you to lay your hands on her. Because you already got free of what she trying to get free of. He been clean already. In obedience to the great Godhead of the church. And upon the profession of her faith. We baptize her now. In the name of the Lord Jesus. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Fill her now, God. Fill her with your spirit. Fill her with your power. Fill her with your anointing. Somebody give the Lord praise. I said somebody give him praise. I said somebody give him praise. Somebody give the Lord praise. Open up your mouth. Open up your mouth. And give the Lord praise. Praise 
praise him like it's your sister. Praise him like it's your daughter. That's it, that's it, that's it, that's it. He's in the room now. I said he's in the room now. Y'all wait on praise team members and y'all wait on folk who can sing to usher y'all into the presence of the Lord. But can't nobody usher you into the presence of the Lord. Like somebody that wants to be delivered. Open your mouth in here. Open your mouth in here. Open your mouth in here. Open your mouth. And give God a prayer. Father, we bless you. We thank you for delivering power. And we speak. I just need some prayer warriors to stop being cute and tap in. We speak that she'll never put another drug in her body. That the Holy Ghost will keep her. And every time that addiction tries to rise up, this is why we come to church. I don't know about all that other stuff, but we speak that she will maintain her deliverance. Anybody ever been hooked on something? I said, anybody ever been hooked on something? I don't care if you hooked on Pepsi. You know it takes the power of God. Hey, what? 
National Pastors and Leadership Conference, an International Leadership Conference, uh, to get empowered and bring us back what the Lord gave you. Thank God for you, to Prophetess uh, Tanja and to Pastor Kim and to Evangelist Elder Marie. To the three of you, we honor you on today. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I need the cameraman to get out of his phone and bring the camera back where it needs to be. Somebody say, bless the cameraman. Amen. Nehemiah chapter 2. Thank God for my mom being here on today. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Always a privilege. All the way from Houston. Yes. Texas. We're thanking God for her Amen. and for uh, her presence. And to our lady on today, Amen. Lady Anita, we thank God for her. Thank you, Lord. Everybody in their rightful place, Amen. chapter 2. I don't have much this morning. I'm reading from the Amplified Bible. Those of you who are watching online, thank you. Those of you who are watching online, you should be able to see the scripture as well. Nehemiah chapter 2, I'll begin reading with verse number 1. And again, I'm reading from the Amplified Bible. Nehemiah 
Nehemiah chapter 2. You have it? The words, I'm sorry, in the month of Nisan. Somebody say Nisan. In the 20th year of King Artaxerxes, when wine was before him, I took up the wine and gave it to the king. Now I had not been sad before in his presence. So the king said to me, why do you look sad since you're not sick? This is nothing but sorrow of heart. And when I was very much, then I was very much afraid. Said to the king, let the king live forever. Why should I not be sad faced when the city, the place of my father's sepulcher, lies waste and its fortified gates are consumed by fire. The king said to me, for what do you ask? So I prayed to the God of heaven and said to him, if it please the king and if your servant has found favor in your sight, I ask that you will send me to Judah, to the city of my, my father's sepulcher that I may rebuild it somebody say rebuild it remember in verse number three he's sad because it the city lies in waste and its gates the thing that fortifies it the things that protects it are consumed with fire and he says my god my job what's on me is to rebuild these walls king beside whom the queen was sitting asked me how long will your journey take and when will you return so it pleased him to send me and I set him a time also I said to the king if it pleases the king let letters be given to me for the governors beyond the Euphrates rivers that they may let me pass through Judah and a letter to Asaph keeper of the king's forest or park that he may give me timber to make beams for the gates of the fortress of the temple and for the city wall and for the house that I shall occupy and the king granted what I asked for the good hand of my God was upon me now I need to make clear because I'm not done reading I need to make something clear we'll be back here next week because I, I as I started last week talking about apostolic ministry and how it is that God is using us outside of just the church walls yes. and how and in this rebuilding process you're going to have to spread and expand your thinking yes. Yes. to outside of Sunday morning church yes. service to be able to do a work that is going to be on shouting and dancing on Sundays. Yes. But I need you to understand what Nehemiah is teaching us is that when you begin to move in these areas, you're going to have everything you need in the next season of your life. I need you to prophesy that. I need you to tell somebody, I will have everything that I need to rebuild. Everybody's not going to believe it. Everybody's not going to say it, but I'm going to give you another chance to say it with conviction. I will have everything that I need to rebuild this next season of my life. Watch it. The Bible says when he gets ready to leave, he asks for what he wants. He has nerve and audacity to ask for what he wants, regardless of how ridiculous it sounds. Can I prophesy something to somebody? I need to get this out and we'll deal with it next week because this week I'm going a whole nother direction in this text. And you'll see what I mean in a minute. But I need you to understand, and here's a word of prophecy. I need you to go back and ask a question that you think is ridiculous. 
I need you to go back and ask for the thing that you think is impossible for you to get. You're telling me that I've been a slave in Babylon and you're releasing me not only to go and build my city, rebuild the wall. Some would think that's enough. Let me not press it. But he had the nerve to turn around and say, give me letters so that I can get through and get rightful passage with no problems. It's enough I'm letting you go rebuild, but you got the nerve to ask me for more. He didn't stop there because after he got the letters for passage, he then asked for letters for all of the lumber that he needed in order to rebuild simply by asking. I need you to understand because God's hand is on you in this season. You cannot be afraid to ask for ridiculous things. Here it is. Here is the word of the Lord. You will only be hindered by the thing you are afraid to ask for. Okay. All right. I put it out there. Mark it. Come back and listen to this because for those of you who didn't believe me, this day will be etched into your mind. And so celebrate with the people who are praising God when you hear about their testimonies simply because they were not afraid to go ask. Go at we The houses we own on this yes. block right now, listen to me, the houses that we own, we did not pay for. The lots that are now parking lots and the homes that we owned around here that need to become parking lots, we have not paid for not one of them. Ask me how we got them. I sat in Commissioner Allen's office and asked him for them. What are you doing with these houses? Can we have them? Y'all don't want to have church. The next thing God's going to give you is because you're going to ask. Look at somebody and say, just ask for it. Moreover, said, the king, said I unto king, if it please the king, let letters be given to me for the governors for the river that they may convey me till I come over into it. Verse number eight, and a letter to Asaph, the keeper of the king's forest or the park, that he may give me the timber to make the beams for the city gates of the fortress of the temple and for the city walls and for the house that I shall occupy. And the king granted what I asked for. For the good hand of my God was upon me. Verse 9. Then I came to the governors beyond the river. I know you're standing. Just stay with me. Because I'm going to be standing a lot longer than you. And gave them the king's letters. Now the king has sent captains of the army and horsemen with me. Here it is. When Sanballat and the Hornite and Tobiah the servant, the Ammonite, heard this. It distressed them exceedingly that a man had come to inquire for and to require the good and the posterity of the Israelites. Your Bible says, the King James says, that when they heard of it, it grieved them exceedingly that there was come a man to seek the welfare of the children of Israel. So I came to Jerusalem and I was there. I, I, I'll stop there. I'll stop there. I just, I just want to talk for just a few minutes about the road to deliverance. All right. The road to deliverance. That's what I want to talk about. The road to deliverance. If I'm, not, if I'm only preaching for one person, that's fine with me. Because the rest of y'all act like y'all don't know where I'm going. I'm preaching to my sister here this morning. Just me and her in the room. Look at somebody and say, there's a road to this thing called deliverance. Say it with me. There is a road to this thing called deliverance. Some of you are wondering, how did I get there? And I, 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 want, to, I want to deal with the apostolic ministry so bad that is in this text that I'm going to have to come back to Nehemiah chapter 2 next week and deal with it. But God began to share some things, and I don't have much but I think that what I have is very needed and very necessary. And when God speaks to me, I go with God. I'm obedient to him. And I need you to know that those of us who are in this room, all of us, whether you know it or not, have been on the road to deliverance. In order for you to be delivered from something. We get in church and we forget. Thank you for those who are clapping. Because we forget sometimes 
where we came from. Mother Vicki, we forget that we were once where they were. And it, it's when you are talking about deliverance, you are not transported to deliverance. Uh, you remember Star Trek when the captain would say, beam me up, Scotty. And he would just beam him up and he would be there. Wouldn't it be awesome if deliverance worked that way? Do I have anybody in the room that's ever been delivered from something? If you've been delivered from something, you know that it's a road. Sometimes it's a long road. But it's a road to deliverance. And as we look at this text, we see what Nehemiah is dealing with. We understand that Nehemiah is, has a task on him to rebuild and to bring Israel into the fullness of their deliverance. That they have been in and out of bondage, but his job is to rebuild. And sometimes... Uh, for those of you, because y'all talking real good to me this morning, if you'll talk back, that would be great. Sometimes the hardest part of deliverance is the rebuilding process. Come on, come on. I know y'all. some of y'all got masks on, uh, but don't let your mask be a muzzle. Sometimes the hardest part of deliverance and the hardest thing for us to step into as it relates to our deliverance is the rebuilding process. Many of you in this room find it hard to take a step to deliverance because you're afraid of what that rebuilding process looks like. Have you ever looked around and seen that things were so bad that you don't even know where to start? You, you ever seen, the, you ever seen that, that TV show Hoarders where they walk in the house and you don't even know where to start cleaning up? Because it's such a mess. Where, where, where do I even start? And here it is. Watch. Come close. And I'm afraid of what I might find when I lift some of this garbage up. And those of you who are afraid of rodents, you think a mouse going to come rolling out, running out of, 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 the, of the rubbish because it's just that much mess in order for me to bounce back. And before you judge the hoarders on the TV show, many of us know that our lives are not much different than that. We got such a mess in our lives that we don't even know where to start. God, where, 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 where should I start? Should I start with my own mind? Should I start with my marriage? Should I start with ministry? Do I prepare my credit? Do I start saving? What do I do first? Because I'm trying to rebuild and I'm trying to come back and I want to come out because that's what deliverance is all about. I want to come out of what I'm in, but the problem is I'm afraid of what rebuilding looks like. Can I talk to somebody in here? I want to help you because I want you to understand what people don't tell you many times and what church folks don't like to talk about is that no matter how saved you are in your lifetime, you will need several deliverances. Yeah, I don't care how full of the Holy Ghost you are. I don't care how much you pray. I don't care how much you fast. You will constantly in your life be needing deliverance. I'm talking about everybody from the usher to the intercessor, from security to the bishop. As long as you are walking with God, you will need to be delivered several times. Who am I talking to in here? You, you will always be in a position where you will need God to bring you out of something. Why are you telling me this Bishop? I'm telling you this because you need to understand how to fight. There is now therefore no condemnation to them who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit and I need you to understand that there is nothing embarrassing about needing to be delivered more times than one. Look at somebody and say I'm in a constant state of deliverance. I always need God to bring me out. You don't want to have, you don't want to believe it but but you are a mirror of the children of Israel the children of Israel have documented at least three major deliverances they went into Egypt in, in, in Genesis and they were there for 400 and something years and you would think 
after 400 and something years that they would have learned their lesson. But help me, deliverance is not about lessons. Deliverance is about warfare. Come on, come on. It doesn't matter what you learn necessarily while you're in it. You can find yourself in another bondage and be needing to be delivered again. Because even if you learn the lesson, the devil is never going to stop being the devil. And I don't care how much knowledge you have, Dr. Smith, who is a professor. You can have all the knowledge in the world. Your learning does not stop you from temptation. Who am I talking to in here? And so they go into Egyptian bondage and then they go into Assyrian bondage and then they go into Babylonian bondage. All different kinds of bondages. Egyptian bondage was a bondage of limitation because Egyptian, the word Egypt means a fortified limited place which suggests to me that maybe not only were they in bondage to keep them under wraps but maybe they were in bondage to protect them themselves who am I talking to I'm just trying to see which side is really listening and which side I'm really preaching to because some of the times you needed to be delivered God allowed you to go into the bondage you were in because there was a work that he was doing on you while you were there oh you don't believe me you don't because you don't read your Bible the Bible says when they went into Egyptian bondage something strange started to happen when they went into Egyptian bondage, John, the Bible says they started to multiply and grow. Which suggests to me that maybe had they not been in Egypt, they would have been snuffed out as a people because they were picked on and everybody was, they were targeted by different nations. But God says, I will put you in Egypt so that I can fortify you. And it doesn't feel good because you have limits on your life. But God says sometimes what you see as limits is really just protection. And so he delivered them, but they didn't learn. I'm just helping you because people make you feel bad for making the same mistake over and over again. But I'm trying to help you that, that, to understand that to, to, to this thing called deliverance, there is a road to it. Can I help you? I don't care. Now, I've been living here my whole life. And if you know a way, somebody tell me a way. But I don't know any way that you can be on 5th Avenue or 4th Avenue by City Hall and make one left or right turn and be in Crown Point. Now, if you know a way, you tell me. Anybody know a way that you can make a right or left turn and immediately be in Crown Point? Anybody? Because I don't care if you go I-65, I don't care if you go climb and work your way, I don't care if you go straight up Broadway, it's still a road to get there. And you cannot overlook the stops on the way. So he takes them through Assyrian bondage, which is not the same as Egyptian bondage. And he, then he takes them, the word Assyrian suggests to step, which not only means to lift or elevate, but it also suggests to replace. <laughs> I'm trying to help you. See, every bondage in your life, everything you need to be delivered from is working something in you. Hear me, hear me. I'm not talking about learning because you don't always learn from what you're in. I'm talking about changing the fiber of who you are. So when we think the word step, we think the word step as in a step up. But when you think step, sometimes you got to think step as anybody ever had uh, your father or mother not there. When your mother or your father gets remarried, you call that parent a what? Yeah, a replacement. <laughs> to what you had. And so God says, when I took them through this bondage, it was not only a bondage of elevation, but it was a bondage of replacement. Repairing every breach in your life. Making sure that you have no holes in your life. So the first time you come out, 
God works in you the ability to be confined or be fortified but not be limited. The second time, God works in his people the ability to understand that they are not going to be without a replacement. That God will repair every breach. And then they go through Babylonian bondage. Which Babylonian bondage is clearly not about understanding because it is a place of confusion. It is a place of Babel. And they go through all of these bondages. And what we see in the text is we see wreckage and we see ruin. Because it's tough to go through de deliverance processes and bondage and not have some wreckage and some ruin. What blows my mind, you see how quiet the church is? What blows my mind is that we don't bond more over our wreckage and ruin. That we don't talk more together about our wreckage and ruin. Because here it is, everybody has wreckage and ruin. Just look over at your neighbor. Look over, look over, look over. They, they got, today they just dressed up wreckage and ruin. Today they just put a collar on their wreckage and ruin. They put a white dress on. They, they, they put a nice sweater on. Today they just dressed it up. But look at them. Don't, don't be afraid to look at them. They're not going to say nothing to you. Just look at them. What you're looking at is walking, talking, living, surviving wreckage and ruin. Oh, I know it's not pretty. I know it's not famous preaching. I know it's not the way you want to hear it. But the truth of the matter is, if we're ever going to get somebody delivered in church, we got to stop acting like we're not a church full of wreckage and ruin. Come on, somebody. Come closer. I see I got your attention now, so come a little bit closer because I really want to help you. Can I help you? If you're not wreckage and ruin, then you're not saved because that's what salvation really is. Salvation, Charles, is just salvaging garbage. Let me preach to y'all because I don't know what they own this morning. Real salvation is about trash that nobody else wanted that you stop on the side of the road and pick up and say, I can use this. Because one man's trash is another man's treasure in this case one man's trash was God's treasure and I don't care how much wreckage I don't care how much ruin I have in my life God says there is no bondage too great for me to pull you out of Who am I talking to? Who am I talking to? I know I'm, I'm, I'm losing some of y'all and I'm okay. This message is not for those of you who want to act like I'm not talking to you. This message is not for those of you who are trying to hide behind your dressed up garbage cans. This message this morning and God interrupted me and I wanted to talk about one thing but he interrupted me because he knew my sister would be here this morning. He knew somebody would be here this morning that needed to understand that wreckage and ruin is not a reason for you to disqualify qualify yourself in fact the only thing that qualifies you for real ministry is the depth of your wreckage and ruin and I don't want to know what school you've been to and I don't know what I don't want to know what church you've been to when you come here to work in ministry I don't want to know who it is that you came from or what you learned I want to know what is your wreckage and your ruin what have you been delivered from or what have you been in bondage to because that'll let me know where to put you and how how to use you and how to make sure that you can bless somebody else you better run run from churches that don't want to know about your wreckage and ruin run from places that disqualify you because of your wreckage and ruin God says I call churches to deliverance ministry. In other words, we're supposed to specialize in reaching our hands down and pulling you out of your wreckage and your ruin. Who am I talking to? 
I need you to understand that this is the day that God says that I am about to cause you to rise from the ashes of your wreckage and your ruin. Nehemiah is just a instrument, a tool to help Israel in yet another one of their deliverance exploits. A long road of Egyptian bondage. A long road of Assyrian bondage. A well-documented 70 years of bondage in Babylon that Daniel wrote about and Jeremiah prophesied about a long process that God used to bring them out and now Nehemiah is just ready to do his part I need some of you in the room to testify to people to help them to understand that sometimes this road is not easy Jeremiah wrote about it. Daniel, at the time for them to come out, is reading the writings of Jeremiah. We always quote the scripture in Jeremiah 29, but we never tell anybody what it's really about. When we say in Jeremiah 29 and 11, I know the thoughts that I think towards you. But we don't understand that Jeremiah is prophesying about the 70 years that God is going to keep them in Israel and bring them, or keep them in Egypt and bring them out. He tells them in 28, 29, and eight, verse 29 and verse 28, he says, For therefore he sent us into Babylon, saying, This captivity is long. Build ye houses and dwell in them. In Jeremiah verse 29, verse number 10, he said, For thus saith the Lord, after 70 years be accomplished at Babylon, I will visit you and perform my good words towards you in causing you to return to this place. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you. Thoughts of peace and not evil to bring you to an expected end. Hear me for those of you who have been wrestling in bondage. Your bondage has an expiration date on it. I know because you ain't never heard nobody say it to you like this. Some people let the enemy steal them before they get to their expiration date. But the reason you can come to church and give God praise is because your bondage has an expiration date. Watch it. And the blessing is some people come out before the date that they're supposed to come out. But the truth of the matter is that no matter what it is you're waiting on, God told me to tell you, you got to remove the thought from your mind that I'm going to be in this forever. Because God wants to reprogram your mind and let you know that even though it's tough and even though it seems long, that there is a day and that day might be today that God is saying that I have expected to bring you out. And you got to remind yourself that God is on your side. Jeremiah said, I know you're going to be in there for 70 years. He said, but the Lord wants you to know that I know the thoughts that I think towards you. Thoughts of peace and not evil. Because sometimes when you're in bondage, it feels like you're at war with God. I'm talking to somebody. It feels like you're at war with God. 
It feels like you and God are enemies, like y'all beefing. What did I do to you? Why can't I shake this? Why can't I come out of this? But God told me to tell you, he got to remind you, my thoughts towards you are thoughts of peace and not evil. It's mind-blowing because you got me in bondage, but you're thinking peaceful thoughts towards me. It's mind-blowing because I'm hooked on something that I can't get rid of, but you're thinking peaceful thoughts towards me. And God told me to tell you that your topsy-turvy is not my topsy-turvy because while you're worried, I'm chilling. God says I'm not worried about it because I know my hand is on your life and when here it is when they came to the end of the 70 years the prophet Daniel rose up and started reading the writings of Jeremiah and something flipped in his spirit and he said wait a minute we almost at the end of this thing because when God gets ready to do a major move in your life it's going to be a prophetic sound that God releases I know y'all don't want to hear this all y'all folks still talking about y'all Baptists and this that and the other I don't care what denomination you call yourself you better not be afraid of words like apostolic and prophetic because if you are you'll never move into the fullness of God there was a word that came to let me know to sound the alarm that God is getting ready to move and if you believe the prophet you shall prosper well here go the prophet you ready for the word of the Lord you have just about come to the end of your road and God is about to bring deliverance to his people I need somebody who can feel the delivering power of God to open your mouth and give God a shout all over this I'm sweating, I'm sweating and working uh, and y'all chilling, look at somebody and say I'm just about at the end of my road, I'm just about I'm just about there, I'm just about there, I can feel it, uh, I can feel it I can feel it, I can feel that God is moving in my favor uh, I feel different uh, I ain't out of it yet uh, but it feels like it's almost uh, at the end I've been wrestling And the closer I get to it, the more the devil is mad. The closer I get to it, the more the devil is trying to fight me. But the devil is a liar. I need you to lay your hand on somebody next to you. If they ain't comfortable with you laying your hand on them, just lay hands on yourself. And say, don't you dare worry about it. It's almost over. It's almost over. That's why the devil's fighting you. That's why the devil is mad. That's why he's attacking your mind. That's why he's attacking your children. It's almost. I can see the breaking of day. I can see it. Weeping may endure for a night. But I sense the sun peeking through the cloud. Somebody help me preach and say, this is a road. There's a road to this. There's a road. There's a road. There's a road. This is going to help you. This is going to help you. It's going to help you to not be so judgmental of other people. First, for two reasons. Number one, because you have your own road. I'm always enamored by people who can point their finger when they don't realize we're on the same road. That we are both working our way to delivery. But it also helps you because you understand that seeing you at Fifth Avenue is not the same as seeing you on Route 30. Because where you were at Fifth, at Fifth Avenue is you're closer now to Crown Point than you were back when you were on Fifth Avenue. Y'all ain't saying nothing. So you're judging me because I ain't reached Crown Point yet. But I'm also not at Fifth Avenue in it. Y'all don't want to have church. Look at somebody and tell them, I'm almost there you, you, this is why you want to make sure you walk away from people that walk away from you 
anybody that cannot stay with you especially when you're almost where God is taking you you don't want them in your life because when I get to crown point I don't want to hear nobody say nothing because the only thing I'm going to be saying is this is the Lord's doing and it's marvelous So it's a road where I was yesterday. It's not where I'm going to be tomorrow. Which is why you can't give up on your children. Which is why you can't give up on husbands and wives. It's why you can't give up on your loved ones. Let God do what he's doing. <laughs> Sometimes space is good. Let him do what he's doing. Because it ain't the end of the road. Y'all don't want to have church. Look at somebody. Marie, I need to tell you, it ain't the end of the road. Look at somebody and tell them, just let God do what he's doing. Just let him do it. And here's the power for 50 of y'all, even online, that will give God a, a major praise when I say this. Because this is major praise worthy. Here, y'all ready? The truth of the matter is, it's a miracle that once I come out of my bondage, that I still have something to rebuild. Because the devil really wanted to stump me to powder. That there would be no residue of me and anything around me. So the reason I ain't fooling with you funny acting church folk and I come to church and praise God is because I ain't even supposed to be here. It's a miracle that he preserved me while I was in my bondage. Whatever you were hooked to was supposed to take your mind. It was supposed to take your body. We were supposed to have a funeral, but I'm still alive. I just heard the Lord speak to me. He just told me, you, you, the reason why you got to fortify yourself and the reason why you got to praise him in this season is because you got to look beyond where you are. You so busy worried about your wreckage and your ruin. I need you to understand what I'm doing for you. It's not about where you are. It's about where you're going. I'm preaching to y'all. But I see myself at conferences. I see myself on another stage. I see myself on CNN. I'm talking to y'all. But I see myself overseas in a packed house with demons scared and nervous. Because here come that boy that was abused, that was rejected. We tried to get him to kill himself. We tried to hook him on something. But he's still preaching. He's still alive. Here he come. Look at somebody and tell him, here I come. Yep, I survived it. Here I come. Hell is nervous. Somebody say, hell is scared of me. Hell is scared of... Watch it. There were three exiles. <laughs> there were three exiles because there's a road to deliverance. When they got ready to release them from Babylon, they didn't all just get up and go. <laughs> because there's a road to deliverance. And everybody's not ready at the same time. And so, Nehemiah is dealing with the third group of people that are ready to be released. Watch it. There are three different levels of people because sometimes when you come out, Everybody connected to you is not ready. Amen. 
I'm telling you, he gave this to me. I was going a whole nother direction. So 70 to 80 years before this is when I first start preaching to y'all from Ezra. That stuff happened when Cyrus got stirred in Ezra chapter 1. And God stirred Cyrus because, watch it, when God puts a prophecy over your life, the devil can't keep you longer than he wants to. God said 70 years, and Cyrus, who did not worship our God, had to get stirred because God said 70 years. I told you there's an expiration date on your deliverance. When God says it's time to let you go, you and nobody else. When it's time for you to get up, you can be high on cocaine sitting at the bar and revival will happen in the bar. Y'all don't want to have real, 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 real church. He, he stirs Cyrus and Cyrus has to let the people go. And 70 to 80 years later, Nehemiah is finally ready to lead the third group of people back. Can I help? God blew my mind with this. Can I help y'all, please? <laughs> Ezra led the first group. Zerubbabel led the second group. Nehemiah had to lead the last group. Watch it, because this is who we are. I keep telling y'all, we are an apostolic church, not by denomination, by anointing. God sends me people who are going to be leaders. And you have to know this, because every time a leader is trained and goes out, you can't leave with them. You got to know where your assignment is. Hear me, Nehemiah, even if he wanted to leave earlier, had to stay in Babylon until it was time for him to lead his group of people. <laughs> what are you trying to say, Bishop? I'm saying everybody don't come out in your time. God has a timing for people to come out because some people are being preserved until it's time for them to leave. And so you're wondering why, God, am I still stuck in this? And there's a whole other message that has to be preached with this because some of you now, there are theological questions being raised. Right? So like if I'm in my deliverance and I'm stuck, hooked on something and we know it's a sin, then... If I'm still hooked on that thing, then what's, what's the penalty for that? But we don't understand the power of the cross. We, 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 don't, we don't understand that if God didn't think that you would have trouble with sin, he wouldn't have died for you. And his requirement wasn't that you get better in the sin first. He said, once you believe that I died for you, you're already saved. And, and, and watch it. And, oh, Lord. And, and once, once, you, once you already are saved, the byproduct of your salvation is that your sin goes into remission. See, when, when somebody has cancer, it ain't. The, the cancer goes into the remission and then they don't have cancer no more. No, the cancer is treated and then it goes into remission. And so when you are saved, even though you are saved, there is still a road not only to your deliverance, but there is a road to your remission. And if we preach this in church, and stop fooling people into thinking that you are super saint. Folk wouldn't have a problem with getting better because they would understand that there is no pressure. Folk don't even want to sit next to you sometimes because they think they're not worthy. Sweetheart, if you knew what God knew, 
Because all we think about is the, is, is the sins we can see. Did I see you smoking? Did I see you having sex? Did you get caught? All we think is about is the man. But, but some people, their minds and their hearts are filthy. You ain't never going to catch them in no club. You ain't never going to catch them in no hotel. First of all, because don't nobody want them. But second of all, understanding that that's not the only sin. You can stop all of that stuff and be sitting in church with a bad heart. With malice in your heart. With a mind that is not even connected to Christ. We got to stop making people think. That's why the mothers are so important. The mothers are important. The men are important. We better start telling these young ladies there is a road to your deliverance. It's not going to happen once Bishop lay hands on you on a Sunday. You will not be at your destination on a Monday. <laughs> it may be on a Monday, but it ain't going to be the next Monday have to help them understand that there are levels to this. And so Nehemiah, I got to go, is leading the third group of people out. Hear me. I hope y'all not tired. Can I give y'all one more point? <laughs> Watch it. Verse 1, chapter 2 opens up. Jacob, this is good. For preachers, studiers of the Bible, the Bible doesn't waste words. It opens up by letting us know, Curtis, this is all happening in the month of Nisan. The Jewish month of Nisan is a month much like spring. A time of budding, a time of, de of deliverance. A time where things come forth. And the Jewish calendar or the biblical calendar, it is their first month of the year. Watch it. When you study the month of Nisan, for those of you who are trying to get free, when you study the month of Nisan, it says that it is generally in our calendar around the month of March and April. Okay, only a few of y'all really know what month it is. Because other, other than that, we'd have been praising God. So let me just go on and give the prophecy, because I used to ride that bus too. It, it says the month of Nisan is somewhere around March and April. Which means that from now through next month, Thank y'all. Y'all fell asleep on me. From now to next month is a time of supernatural deliverance. That whatever you've been trying to get free of, God says, I'm going to supernaturally deliver you from that thing. Look at somebody in the eyeball and tell them, neighbor, come on, tell them whatever's been holding you. God says you're about to get free of that thing. The month of Nisan. It's the month of the Passover. Y'all don't know nothing about the Passover because we don't talk about the blood no more. It means that it's not going to happen by my power. But I'm going to be delivered because there's some blood. Look at your neighbor this morning and tell your neighbor, say, Nay, I'm getting ready to get free of this. Come on, tell somebody. Uh, it's been locking on to me uh, for too long. Uh, come on, tell somebody. Uh, it's been holding me uh, for too long. Uh, come on. Uh, tell your neighbor. Uh, it's been a long, uh, a long, uh, a long, uh, a long road uh, to my deliverance. Uh, but I'm getting ready. Uh, to come up out of that thing. Uh, I'm in the month of Passover. Uh, I'm in the month uh, where God, uh, if he sees the blood, he'll pass, uh, he'll pass over. Uh, but once he sees the blood, uh, after he sees the blood, uh, 
he'll bring me out do me a favor this morning just look at somebody in the eyeball and tell them neighbor the best thing you got going is not your job y'all ain't saying it tell your neighbor the best thing you got going is not your family the best thing you got going is not your money the best thing you got going is not your credit tell them the best thing that you have in your life is the blood when I see the blood when I see the blood when I see the blood I'll pass over you I'll pass over you I thank God for passing over that all night and all day while I was in my mess the angels the angels were watching over watching over me the only reason I made it out of my mess is because he took the blood he took the blood and smeared it on my life and when he looks at me he don't see Sion he sees the blood look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor I'm still alive cause I got blood I'm still alive cause I'm covered in the blood of Jesus and because I'm covered I get to come out I'm coming out of Egypt I'm coming out of bondage it's been a long road but today is Nissan somebody shout Nissan Nissan I'm in the month of deliverance I'm in the month of freedom I'm in the month of breakthrough open your mouth in here open your mouth in here and shout 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 it's been a long road it's been some bumps it's been some bruises it's been some devils there have been some enemies there were some snakes along the way that tried to destroy me but when the wicked even my enemies and my foe came upon me to eat up my flesh come on saints help me preach it I said when the wicked even my enemies and my foe came upon me to eat up my flesh help me preach it I said when the wicked even my enemies and my foe came upon me to eat up my flesh they stumbled and fell they stumbled and fell I'm almost there I'm almost there I don't care how I get there but I can see my deliverance I can see my breakthrough if I have to crawl I'll crawl if I have to crawl I'll crawl but I'm on my way I'm on my way I need to talk to somebody you come too far to turn around now keep on pushing keep on pushing but this is why I come to church because somewhere along the way somebody will pick me up and carry me the rest of the way open your mouth open your mouth Open your mouth. Open your mouth. Give them glory. Give them glory. Pray. His holy name. I said praise his holy name. 
open your mouth lift your hands and give praise to Jesus because he is the only one that can get you to the end of the road tell somebody I'm almost there I'm almost there I'm almost there through many dangers toils and snares I have I have, I have, I've already come. It was grace that brought me thus far. And it is grace that'll lead me on, on, on Christ, the solid rock. I stand all of the ground, all of the ground is sinking sand. I come this far my faith give God the glory send up a shout lift your hands and open your mouth cause I command every demon I command every devil that's trying to keep you longer then you should stay I commanded to let you go let you go when I count to three there's a shout coming from your belly it's not any shout it's a shout that's going to release you it's a shout that's powered by the Holy Ghost it's a shout that's in agreement with you coming out it's the end of the road shout saying Lord I'm done with everything that's not in your will one two three give them a shout Yeah! 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 I feel the Holy Ghost. I said, I feel the Holy Ghost. I said, I feel the Holy Ghost. I said, I feel the Holy Ghost. I feel them. I feel them. I feel them. Oh, never again. Shot to Hey, hey, hey. Hey, hey, hey. Back to your childhood. Back to your childhood. Back to your childhood. I said, give him a shout. How? 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 You're almost there. You're almost there. You're almost there. Come to the end of the road. Come to the end of the road. You're almost there. You're almost there. You're almost. I need y'all to shout. Somebody give him glory. Somebody give him glory. Yeah. I said, somebody give him. Shoto. God said, when you come out of surgery tomorrow, you're going to be a new creature. You think they're going in for one thing. God said, I'm going in for another. Oh, there's another way to glory. There's a. Oh, Shoto. There's another weight of glory. Oh, oh, oh. Somebody give them praise. Somebody give them praise. Somebody give them praise. Release. Shoto. I can't even hear out here. Release. Him then uh, we speak healing. We speak healing. We speak healing. Shut up. Healing. To the membranes better surrounding your heart. We command that you shall not have heart failure. And we command you to live. Oh, when you go back to the doctor, your blood pressure will be regulated. And the valves in your heart will pump blood regularly. 
I need somebody who believes that God is a healer to give him praise right now. I said, give him, oh, he's a healer. He, if it was you, you'd be praising him because we just saved her life. Because the devil thought he had a date for her celebration of life. But today God is canceling all of his contracts and you're going to live. Somebody shout, you're going to live. You're going to live. Shout, you're going to live. You're going to live. You're going to live. You're going to live. You're going to lift your hands. You're going to live. You're going to live, daughter. You're going to live. You're going to live. All God wants is a yes. If you tell him yes right now in your heart and out of your mouth, God said, I'll do it for you now. I want you to open your mouth and begin to tell him yes. Not hallelujah, yes. 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 By the power of God, we break all contracts with the devil. Devil, take your hand off. She doesn't belong to you. We break all contracts, every agreement you thought you had. We break it, ho, so tight. And we close the door. Ho! We close the door. We close the door. We close the door. We close the door. Work with her. We close the door. Every attack. Listen. Everybody that is wrestling with an addiction. That's it. That's the best place to be. Everybody that is wrestling with something and you know you need to come out of it. It is an addiction. Run down to this altar with your hands lifted and your mouth open. If you're not going to come down praising him, believing him, don't come. Everybody that is wrestling, come, come. It, whatever it is, anything you're addicted to, this is, this is not for us to shame you. Some of you are addicted to lying. Some of you are addicted to pornography. Whatever you're addicted to is not to shame you, it's so you can be free. Come with your hands lifted. Come with your hands lifted. Come with your hands lifted. Evangelist Patsy, Pastor Owens, I need y'all to help me. Thank you, mother. Thank you, lady. Help me bring them to the altar. Help me hurt them. Come with your hands lifted. We give you all the glory. We worship you. Come on, lift your hands in worship. Deliverance is in this house. Deliverance is in this house. It's been a long road, but today is the day. We are about to take authority over every demonic but y'all stay with her because she hasn't been in church come on mother let my mother next to her she hasn't been in church that long she needs she don't understand she might not know what's about to happen but the power of god is about to hit this altar hear me come on that's it come on come on come on listen as you lift your hands it's going to take a release from you because you are parting ways. You are denouncing everything that's been holding you back. Everything that you've been addicted to. Everything. 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 Did we not have children's church today? We didn't have children's church today? Not on the first Sunday? Cover these kids. If you got kids, get with them. If you got kids somewhere, cover them. That's fine. You can cover them for where you are. Just make sure you cover them in prayer. Everybody at this altar, you're going to begin to denounce her. Yes. You're going to begin to denounce everything that you've been addicted to. Just begin to open your mouth and denounce it. Just denounce it. 
Say, I come out of agreement with it. If you don't want us to know what it is, you don't have to say it out loud. God knows. Just begin to denounce it out of your mouth. Mouth it, lip it, something. I come out of agreement with it. I come out of agreement with it. I come out of agreement with it. Perversion, homosexuality. I come out of agreement with it. I come out of agreement with it, whatever it is. Addiction to nicotine, drugs, whatever it is, whatever is addicting, addicting my mind, whatever it is, come out of agreement with it. Come on, that's the first step, come on. Now those of you just begin to come out of agreement with it. Come on. It's been a long road, but, but we're cutting ties today. We're cutting ties, we're cutting, we're cutting ties. Some more of you need to be at this altar, but you don't want us to know, and that's why you stay bound. We're not judging you. All right, now, there's a sound that's going to be released. When I say do it, I want you to open your mouth, and I just want you to begin to release, and from your belly, shate, every addicting spirit is coming up. Y'all ready? Come on. I want everybody at this altar to open your mouth and just release it. Every spirit of addiction. Come on, open your mouth. I part ways with you. Nicotine. Every mind-altering substance. Devil, take your hand off. Addiction to technology. Addiction to pornography. Addiction. Everything that's causing me to be separated from you. How? We denounce it. We denounce it. We denounce it. Go for it. We denounce it. We denounce. Satan, you have no power. Satan, you have no power. Satan, you have no power. We command you to drop your weapons and flee. The Lord has given us authority over you. Authority. Authority. Oh, yes. Oh. There's a transformation happening at the altar. You came in one way, but you're leaving another way. Oh. Lord, make me a house. So cold. Oh, ta ta on your shine. Make me own. Oh, Lord. Lord, make me a house. Oh, make me a yes, house of Satan, we denounce your the power. We take authority over you, Lord. Lord Holy Spirit, do your work. In the name of Jesus. you I'm chasing you I'm chasing you I'm chasing I'm chasing show time I'm on your your side the baby see I'm not I'm on your side And may the fire on my altar never burn up. Fire on my altar never burn up. The fire on my altar never burn up. Make me a house of prayer. 
May the fire on my altar May the fire on my altar never burn out. May the fire on my altar never burn out. Take me a house of prayer. May the fire on my altar never burn out. May the fire on my altar never burn out. May the fire on my altar never burn out. Take me a house of prayer. Deacon Linda, Deacon John, Deacon Linda, Deacon John, go get the communion. We're going to do it different. It's a mess this morning. We're not going to follow. I just want y'all to begin to pass it down every row. Just make sure everybody gets communion while God is moving in the sanctuary. Marie, can you help them as well? Them two work that side, Marie. And uh, give me somebody else. Elder Benefield, can you help Marie? Oh, you, no, you're good. Elder Benefield, you and Marie pass it out on this side. Let's make sure everybody gets a communion cup. May the fire on my altar never burn out. May the fire on my altar never burn out. Make me a house of prayer. Um, Y'all do this side. And then they're going to do that side. Thank you. Just pass it down. Let them pass it. Marie, just give it to them. Let them pass it. Elder Benefield will catch it on this side. Thank you. Those of you watching online, it's first Sunday. If you got crackers and juice, go get it. If you have crackers and juice, go get it. Somebody, Evangelist Patsy, can you go with her? Right here. Come up here. Oh, we got it. Did y'all get one? Okay, good. Good job, y'all. Thank y'all. Thank you for going with my audible this morning. Keep singing that. Lord, God is moving. Listen, in 2022, after all we've been through as a nation, this is the only reason I come to church. Yes. I don't want to come to church and do stuff the same way. I need people to be healed, delivered, yes. saved. Yes. I need God to speak. Give me, come here, sweetie. I need to serve you your communion. Give me some gloves.
Let's give God praise. So, because we understand what communion is all about. Even those of you who have been delivered, let's make sure Elder Benefield, Evangelist Patsy, when they get up, make sure they get cups. Let's make sure everybody that's down gets cups. Here's why. Because of the power of what communion is all about. The blood the body of our Savior is the reason why we can be delivered and come out of what we're in. It's the reason why we serve our candidates first because we believe God that their baptism is sealed and here's why. And so Jesus was in the upper room with his disciples lest we forget that this is why we do all of this. It is not for pomp and circumstance. It is not for fame and fortune, for recognition. We do it because of the blood of Jesus. He said this is a new covenant cup that I am giving to you. And he poured the wine and took the bread. The Bible says when he took the bread, he broke it. And I always break my wafer so that I can remember that his body was broken for us. Take ye and eat the body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. My bishop, whenever we're taking communion, has us to put the cup over our head to symbolize what I preached this morning that I'm covered by the blood of Jesus. Take ye and drink the cup of the New Testament, the blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Let's give God praise. Let's give God praise for, amen. I know we're a little all over the place right now. Just bear with us. We're almost done. I want to thank God for this woman of God who was running late for church, but called to make sure that we knew she was coming. Amen. We want to celebrate her on her new walk with Christ. Thank you, Lord. The certificate of baptism certifies that Marquita Rowell, Rowell was baptized in the name of Jesus Christ on the third day of April at New Hope Church, 2307 Rhode Island Street, Gary, Indiana, signed by Bishop Sion Roberts. Congratulations, sweetheart. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> you hang this in your room. Turn up. So she just wanted to know, she, she really, she asked me, she said she wanted to ask me questions, she really testified. She's saying that Alan prayed for her, prophesied to her that something happened to her seven years ago. And he prophesied it to her, she said it was true because seven years ago she, she fell from a balcony and broke her hip. Your hip, right? And, and God uses prophecy so that you can believe him. He uses prophecy so he can propel you into your future. For those of you who don't believe in it, let's give God praise for her. Hey God, but she's so happy. <laughs> I wish all the saints was that happy when they got saved. Amen. I'm happy for you, sweetheart. Listen, we are in the month of Nissan. Everybody say Nissan. Nissan. March and April. And so our Holy Week prayer revival is going to be nothing short of amazing. Miracles, signs, and wonders. Starting the week of April 11th, that's Monday through that Friday, that Good Friday, taking us all the way into Good Friday. You're going to want to be here. That's in person, in person. And those that can't get here because you're not here, I know Ashley and Tanya in Minnesota and uh, Roshanta in Arizona and some others of, the, of you that are watching from Minnesota, Texas, Arizona, Tennessee, Canada, wherever you are watching from, um, you can be a part. We will be live every night. We will be live every night. If she ain't ready, let us stay. Amen. She's still going through. I, this is the kind of church I want to have. I just mess up our program don't know what to do next kind of church. That's what I like. I don't care about all of that A and B selection and all of that. All right? Um, Resurrection Sunday. Everybody say Resurrection Sunday. Resurrection Sunday. That's April the 17th. We have sunrise service. All right? So after we come out of a whole week, yes, that's a lot of church. Uh, but we need a lot of prayer. <laughs> we need a lot of deliverance. God is going to be moving. And those who need it, you're going to see souls saved. I would tell, I would venture... If you know somebody that is unsaved, somebody that needs prayer, somebody that needs a healing,
God is going to be moving each night. All right. At first, I was not going to tag uh, a theme for each night, and I don't know if I will or not. But I'm going to get on a conference call with every person with every person that's praying, and we're going to talk about the theme for each night or the theme for the week. How we're going to do that? But just bring them because there's going to be miracles that's going to be released in that Sunday morning resurrection. Sunday, 6 a.m. sharp. We will be live and we'll be here in the sanctuary for sunrise service sunrise service everybody say sunrise service 6 a.m david said early will i rise to seek your face lord we're going to be here for that sunrise service christ we believe rose early uh, on the morning that he did rise pastor jr mcdonald is going to be our guest speaker um, for that particular service we're asking for our choir to be here yes we want the choir all day you want to be a choir member is what it takes. Amen. We have not required much of you. You all usually sing one Sunday out of the month, but we, we spread your wings a little bit. So we want you to be with us on Resurrection Sunday all day because we'll be having 6 a.m. service. The mothers have already told me what the menu is going to be. They'll be making sure the breakfast is prepared for us right after that. And then if you need a nap, you can get a nap. Whatever you need to do, we're right back here at 11 a.m. for our regular Resurrection Sunday at 11 a.m. Uh, the babies will be here. The babies will have speeches. We have a little youth program we're going to let them do. And so we're thankful to God for all of that. On this Tuesday, everybody say this Tuesday, we will be in person for TNT service. I don't know if you watched the last TNT service. The book of Revelation chapter 12 uh, was an amazing chapter, an amazing teaching. 13 is even better. All right, 13 is even better. So you're going to want to be here in the building for Bible study on this Tuesday night, 7 p.m. All of the birthday people in the month of April, if your birthday's in April, stand up. We want to see you. All of the April birthday people, happy birthday. <laughs> Pastor Owens and Camille and all of you all, wave your hand, Pastor O. Amen. All of the April birthday babies, we thank you. We recognize you. We say happy birthday. And um, we have... Uh, a virtual birthday party for all of you on the third Thursday in April. Don't miss your virtual birthday party, okay? Don't miss that. So make sure you're there. We recognize the month of April as Child Abuse Awareness Month. So you see people with these blue ribbons on? That's for child abuse awareness. And it's important to me because as a child, I was abused. Amen? I was abused as a child. So it's very, very, very... How many of you were victims of child abuse, specifically child abuse? So it's very near and dear to our hearts um, and I'm not talking about whoopings because my mother didn't abuse me she whooped me I didn't abuse my kids I did whoop them though we're not talking about whoopings I'm talking about abuse amen abuse and so child abuse is very near and dear to our heart and so those of us who were abused we want to make sure we recognize those and whatever we can do New Hope Connect where's our Deacon Liz Rachel raise your hand who else who are we missing Dr. Michonne and Vic, Mother Vicky, that's our New Hope Connect ministry. They're leading this effort in the Child Abuse Awareness Month. Anything, if there's a child you know of that's being abused, um, go to one of them and we can, that's what New Hope Connect is all about. I don't know if you understand it or not, but God does all things well. New Hope Connect is really our uh, apostolic ministry to connect us with the marketplace, to connect us with the things that God had, would have for us to do outside of Sunday morning service. So if you know of a child um, that's being abused, Make sure you go to one of them. There's information on the table in the vestibule. Make sure on your way out you get that. And we thank God for you. Make sure that you love this, like this, share this uh, um, broadcast on today. It'll be on later tonight at, on Facebook at 5 p.m. All right? Listen, let's get ready to give. Let's get ready to give. I want to, again, thank God. for Yes, I, again, want to thank God for my mom being here all the way from Texas. And then my sister walked in with my niece. Stand up, y'all. Atera turned 10 years old. Stand up, y'all. Let them see you, Hawaii. And Atera. Thank y'all. Welcome. Atera turned 10 years old. Uh, when is her birthday? Today? Tomorrow. She turns 10 years old tomorrow, and we want to say happy birthday to her. Uh, 10, a big, big 10 years old. So share some love with her. If you got some extra change in your pocket, make sure she get it. Amen. <laughs> Um, we want to say happy birthday. All right, let's stand. We're getting ready to give. We're getting ready to give as the Lord has blessed us to give. Be a blessing. Those of you watching online, go to our app. Let's make sure we put the ways to give 
on the screen. Thank you. Those of you watching online, go to our app and give through the app. I look a mess. I'm looking online. I'm, my clothes is all. Pray. All right. She said, don't worry about it. <laughs> Uh, thank you so much. Let's get our hearts and minds ready to give. If you're not a tither, you need to be a tither. You cannot ask God for more if you're not doing what he already has asked you to do. Everybody that has some sort of income needs to be a tither. Let's be a blessing. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, we are about to get a new organ. Our organ is falling to pieces, all right? I, I'm asking you to give just a little bit more. Pastor is taking on, right now, taking on that uh, responsibility because we got a lot that we got to do as a church, but we can't be without an organ. You don't care about it until you come to church one Sunday and we don't have no instruments, right? And then you're going to be wondering what's going on. So for now, I am taking that on because I don't want to add that budget to us. But if you give the way you're supposed to give, our CFO might look and say, look what the Lord has done and help us out. All right, so please give as the Lord has blessed you to give this morning. Keep in mind that we have needs. We got needs. We eventually are going to have to do something with our roof. But right now, this week, we got to get a new organ because Tyrone is talking about us real bad about our raggedy organ that's been falling apart for years. All right, so we, we should have a new organ real soon. All right. Uh, we're praying for, for attorney Wanda Hayes, who has lost her husband. Thomas Hayes, his funeral is going to be next Monday. Next Monday. What's that date? April the 11th. April the 11th. So that funeral is going to be next Monday right here. We need everybody to be in place. They are members here at New Hope. They are members, y'all. So we need everybody to be in place next Monday, April the 11th at 10 or 11 o'clock. 11, 11 o'clock. All right. So let's make sure we're doing that. Our, my friend and my brother, Pastor Anthony Tyler, his funeral is next Saturday. You all can begin coming around, everyone on both sides. Starting from the rear, thank you so much. Thank you so much for your free giving this morning. Giving as the Lord has blessed you to be able to give. Thank you so much, thank you so much. Good to see you again, Sister Russell, two weeks in a row. Good to see you. To God be the glory. Thank you so much. So we want to Next Sunday, we'll get some graphics. Grayson, where's Grayson? Yeah, somebody grab. Hey, so we're going to set up a day, probably the end of this month, where we can honor Travis. He's done so many great things, and he's a product of our church. And so uh, we'll let you know the date. It'll be soon here where you can get the family in here, and we do something big for him. We're so proud of him. Um, what he's done has sent ripple effect through the whole state of Indiana. As a black man in Chesterton, Indiana, he made so much history and black history that we want to make sure we honor him. So we'll get you that date so you can let them know the family. But those of you who don't know, go look it up. Um, Travis Grayson has done an amazing thing in, the North, in Northwest Indiana and in the state of Indiana as a student athlete, and we're proud of him. Let's give God praise for him, and we're going to be honoring him. Uh, with an award. Has everybody had a chance to give? Thank you so much. Thank you so much for your giving. Those of you who are watching us online, we pray that you are giving as well. Pray that something was said that blessed you on this morning. Again, uh, we will be rebroadcasting again on YouTube at 5 o'clock. So if you missed it, uh, if you missed some of the broadcast, or if you know somebody that needs to watch it, it won't be on Facebook. It'll be on YouTube when they go there at 5 o'clock today. Let's stand. Let's stand. We're on our way home. All hearts and minds clear. Hallelujah. 
What a powerful, powerful display of God's presence and power. His word does the work. His word does the work. His word does the work. Father, in the name of the mighty Lord Jesus Christ, we pray that as we leave this place, those that need to will continue on this road to deliverance. That as we leave here, those have, that have received their deliverance will begin to walk in it. Begin to walk in the freedom that the Lord has given us by Christ Jesus. That as Nehemiah had an assignment to continue to bring deliverance in the rebuilding process to Israel. That you will continue to help us to stay on our assignment as we begin to unlock Nehemiah and we understand all of the pitfalls and all of the distractions that have come to him while he was trying to bring deliverance. Let us be steadfast, unmovable in our assignment to bring deliverance to your people. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray and we say it is so. Now may the grace of God, the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, may it rest, rule, and abide with us both now and forever. Let every heart say amen. If you're comfortable, hug somebody and tell them I love you. And there's nothing.